All right. I believe this means we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tech fans of all shapes and sorts and sizes and persuasions, thank you so much for dropping by. We're going to have a little casual chat, a, a little hangout while, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, work from home uh, situation that many of us are finding them, uh, ourselves in is, is also affecting those of us who do a lot of work out at studios. Uh, we're examining some of the different protocols and some of the different ways that we are still going to be able to produce high quality content for you fine folks out there and uh, make, make sure that we can still do live streams and interact. Uh, as part of an initiative where we've been trying to bring back the New Egg Now brand, uh, it was a, the weekly live stream that Trisha Hirschberger and I used to do down at New Egg Studios. We still want to make sure that we can make some fun stuff for you guys, check out some cool tech, also talk about some of those topics where we might be examining a change in our work-life balance, we might be tackling some of those projects where we're going to be uh, you know, maybe building up uh, gaming PCs. I, if you caught my Twitter, there were a bunch of uh, free games going out uh, this, uh, this morning. Uh, Tomb Raider, the 2013 Tomb Raider, and then also uh, on Epic, the Epic Game Store. I'm sorry, the Tomb Raider was over on Steam, and on the Epic Game Store was Watch Dogs. I mean, wouldn't it be great if you, uh, you had a system that could totally play those? We're going to be talking about a variety of things. I thought we would kick off this experiment, this live streaming uh, experiment, just unboxing some kit, uh, checking out some of the things that I've got coming up for review. Uh, this was uh, uh, shipped courtesy of Newegg uh, for this Newegg Now stream. And uh, I thought we could have a little fun. I've got my chat coming up here right in front of me on this really uh, awesome dual screen phone that I, w I won't be talking about a whole lot during this broadcast. <laughs> but I thought we could hang out for the next hour, check out some fun toys, and then talk about some stuff that if, if you guys have concerns out there, you, you're looking at making some of your own improvements, your, your own upgrades, rebuilds, stuff like that. We could all have a good time and check this stuff out together. I'm already seeing some, some fun folks on, uh, I see Matt Tyler, Skinny P2, Pata, um, Vazikos, The Mango Bandito, uh, Master Squalix, PS Boy, Geet, Madden, Otaku. All right, we've got, we've got a full house. So I'm going to kick open some boxes right now, and then I think I'll leave it up to you all out there streaming right now um, what, what we're going to take a look at. So uh, the title of the video should be up, everyone. Jose saying, what's up, everyone? Hey, everyone. Uh, Matt Tyler saying, I'm going to need your help building a gaming PC as that seems to be the way to go, but I'm a noob at building. You know, I think this is always, uh, th it's always a good time to have those longer form conversations on building a PC. I mean, there are tons of resources out there, but especially in this day and age, uh, Matt, Matt's a good buddy of mine. He's out there in the UK. He's a... Uh, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but I think like the home computer is a Chromebook. Those of us in the audience, I'm sure we can help Matt out with something that's going to be better for gaming than a Chromebook, right? So you, you are in the right place, and this is the community of people that I'm sure are going to be able to help push you over that hill to, uh, to get a good system built. So first up, out of this box right here, I mean, who doesn't love opening boxes, right? Fun stuff. I don't do a lot of unboxing videos on my own channel. So when Newegg was like, hey, you want to do this? I was like, yeah, let's actually check this stuff out. This could be fun. We're going to be taking a look at the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 2070. I've actually not played with some of these. Uh, what do we want to call this? This is still a high-end GPU, right? We know that there's some commentary on what may be coming down the pipe. We uh, just went through the super refresh. But the, the straight up 2070, still a monster GPU. So we're gonna be taking a look at that. I also have just like a fun little prop that we can take a look back at how far we've come <laughs> getting to the 2070. Um, let me get this out of the way here. Um, from Geet Madden. Hey, that second screen that second screen has common has come in handy. You can use it as a stand in portrait mode. <laughs> I I yeah. Okay, I'm talking to, I'm going to be digging into this phone. I'm not going to be talking about this phone a lot during the stream, but it's so silly how, for me, the prop up ability of a second display is one of the core benefits of having the second screen. I know it's supposed to be like super fancy for other stuff, but literally just always having a kickstand, that's kind of my jam. I like it a lot. And then 
Mango Bandito saying Gigabyte makes great cards, and that is absolutely true. The, uh, the card in my current workstation, ah, man, this is in here snug, sorry. Gotta get, okay, good. I didn't want to drop this bad boy, because we're also gonna be taking a look at an MSI Thin, the GF65. So this is also going to be on the uh, on the docket. So someone, uh, first person to say it out in the live chat on uh, whatever streaming service you might be watching this on. Do we go for the graphics card first, or do we go for the laptop first? I'm going to be, be streaming for about an hour, so I want to spend some time with each of these these products. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Whoever says it first, that's what I'm going to go for. But the uh, the card in my current workstation, Project Asteria, um, my thread wrapper build is uh, is an Aorus, you know, high end uh, gigabyte card. I've been having really good experiences with gigabyte gear lately, especially trying to find some of those combos. You know, I'm, I'm doing an AMD build with um, with an NVIDIA GPU and a couple different parts back and forth. And I was really concerned about that. I thought maybe you know maybe going all Team Red might have been the right fit. But it turns out to have been um, a, a solid choice. Okay, I see Skinny P2 saying go go for the graphics, go for the gold graphics up first. So we're gonna check out this is the RTX 2070. Let me put my pocket knife away. Already, um, you know, the Eagle Scout in me is uh, is disappointed in myself that I didn't like check my surroundings and that I left an open knife out on the table. That's that's bad form. <laughs> okay, Gigabyte. Oh, and David Stevens hooking up a super chat. Everyone say, hey, David Stevens. He said laptop first, but he was too slow. Sorry, David. We're gonna go, we're gonna go with the graphics card first. So a uh, skinny P2, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, this is the 2070. Now, um, because I'm running a 2080 in my desktop and I couldn't rip it out for this stream, I've got something older we can take a look at opposite this here too. But here, let me see if this is gonna work. This is the grand experiment, is to try and make this stream look a little bit better, just a little bit nicer and a little bit more professional so that we can get, because I'm doing it all by myself. You know, I'm doing it live and I'm doing it all on my own here. And uh, old Nick42, nice PC building, Matt. Yup. Again, this is another, uh, um, I, I'm broke, and uh, Newegg hooked up a nice mat for me to do these videos on. So I'm, I'm not going to front like, like I was just expert and uh, had all this stuff ready to go. This is this has been a team effort. The Newegg ninjas have been helping out tremendously in keeping me uh, keeping me uh, working here. So, real quick. Oh, Aditya Anil with another super chat. Way past my bedtime here. Have fun one. Aditya, go get some rest, man. The stream will be live. We'll make sure that people can still catch it after the fact. Um, Aditya has been a long time uh, contributor to my channel. He's, uh, again, real good people on this, on, this, uh, on this stream. And that this is the 2070. I just feel, felt like it needed that flourish. All right, so we've got the, this is a two fan system right here. Uh, again, from, from playing with the 2080s and, and even getting my hands on some of like the 2080 Ti's um, at, at Newegg, one, this is kind of refreshing that this is not a, a ridiculously heavy card, um, but looking up at the top, let me see if I can, if the autofocus is gonna work here. I don't know that it will. Ah, there we go. So we can kind of see those copper heat pipes coming right off the top. You can see like the little uh, power cable, uh, power connector over here at the side. Although me moving just wigged out my camera's autofocus, so that's not great. Um, can we? Sh can I show off? Is it might not focus here for us? Come on, I'm gonna do that that really obnoxious like 3D thing from SCTV. If anyone catches SCTV references, then you're like way older than I am. Uh, right there is kind of good. It's kind of following me there. So we've got uh, triple display ports and one HDMI. That I thought was a little curious in terms of the design um, for what we might be connecting to a card like this. But a dual fan, um, relatively slim. Again, I, I, I like that uh, we're, we're looking at something that it, this is definitely going to, you know, you're going to need a full ATX case for, obviously. But again, uh, 2080s, the 2080 in my system, a lot bigger. And also, I, I have a lot less fear of a card like this, um, you know, kind of sagging off the motherboard. I know the, the big hip thing is to now like mount so that the card's, card's upright. Um, my build is not that fancy. 
but um, you know, I, I do actually use the, the silly stand. Oris provides a stand to, to brace the back end of the graphics card. It's probably gonna be fine. I don't know why it makes me so nervous having such a large uh, card um, card uh, in my build like that. Uh, Dear Strong Bad, send it to me, JC. <laughs> I wish I could. This one's gonna go back as soon as I'm done playing with it. And from Pata, asking, there's only a single eight pin connector right there on the side. So this is the upper mid range. Someone tell me in the chat, what do we call a card like the 2070? I feel pretty confident saying that the 2060 is a solid mid-range card. It's kind of right in the middle of the lineup. But the 2070 starts playing in that territory where, you know, it's like it's it's not a lower end part, but it's also not the premier tier of what a manufacturer like Gigabyte and a partner like NVIDIA is gonna put together. Uh, Skinny P2 saying affordable. I mean, it, it, so is this like a, is this like the premium mid-ranger when we're talking about smartphones? Is that is that kind of the uh, the designation that we're going to go with? Um, so from All Seen I twenty four, Pata is saying mid high end, and and Packinator saying twenty seven is high end in my opinion. So is it that we need like a different designation for something like a twenty eighty? So like maybe the twenty eighty is like a is a is like a plaid tier, you know, like uh, space balls. You know, they've gone to plaid. Maybe maybe that's what that tier is, and that this is the high end. You know, a 2070 would be the high end, and that then you can go to ludicrous speed <laughs> above that. Um, yeah, Jose is also saying it, it's it's. I'd say it was high end. Uh, 2070 is is high end in my opinion. So uh, I'm sorry, I wanted to get back. Uh, all seen I-24 saying, I think the 2060 is no good for ray tracing. You'd want to step up to the 2070. So I am one of those people, especially with what's going on in the world today. I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk too much trash about ray tracing on the 2060 looking slightly longer term. If you check out the, the Newegg Studios channel, uh, we've been doing RTX theater. We've been doing this ray tracing theater. I thought it was hilarious that like one of the first videos they brought me on to talk about was Quake RTX. So, you know, you can play the original, not Quake, uh, Quake 2. You can get those blocky graphics with your Nine Inch Nails soundtrack, but you can get it beautifully ray traced. Um, I think they did that because I'm crazy old. Uh, but while we've been going through some of these games, the improvements to uh, DLSS, the, the most recent patch, and we got to play with it on Wolfenstein. So I got to do the video with them checking out Wolfenstein. The new methods of compression, and, um, and I, I, you'll, you'll pardon because I, I'm spacing on the right word to describe the interpolation of the frame as it's scanning what the, the player is seeing and then able it's able to sort of compress how much information the card really has to chew up, but then it's still putting out a sub significantly higher quality image than I was expecting it to be able to put out. So especially in that tier, when we're talking 2060 to 2070, the frame rates, the, uh, the ray tracing effects, all of that is still gonna be instantaneous. In fact, we saw we saw, and someone please, uh, if, if a Newegg Studios team member is watching this right now, please correct me if I've got the numbers wrong here, but we saw faster frame rates with RTX and DLSS on than with RTX off completely. So especially playing at the, at the high end with a 2070 and into the mid range with a 2060, I think we're in really good shape. Um, it, what, what it's going to take is just a bit more support from developers to enable those features in games. But to me, that's, that's a no brainer. You know, it's not a matter of if they'll do it. It's a matter of when they'll have the resources to do it correctly. I was, I was shocked. I mean, you're looking at water, water effects that are incredibly perfectly mirrored and then contoured to the shape. So there's this, this one sequence we were, we were checking out in Wolfenstein where you're walking through like a control room and it's got those like, those like 70s style panel uh, little uh, square glass pieces. And the way the control panel would mirror and reflect off of each one of those little squares and then warp to the shape of that, I just, 
it's so small. Again, we need so much more processing power to get us over to that next step, right? You know, like going from like, you know, pixel art to like blocky 3D rendered graphics was a jump in processing power from the last generation of gaming to this new ray traced. The effect is a bit more subtle, but it's it's funny how the feel of it and, and the immersion so much more accessible. So what I wanted to show off and I'm kind of sad because I, I recently went through and uh, I cleaned up uh, the gadget lab a little bit. I, I had a 1080, I had a 1070, and then I also had a, um, a 980. And so I kind of cleaned house a bit and I got rid of a bunch of, of graphic cards. Uh, you know, I made like $15 on eBay getting rid of some old gear. But with this 1070 and for, um, for, for how reasonable the shape of this card is. I wanted to pull out one of the last older cards. I, I haven't even thought about selling it. I might just give it away on Twitter. Um, David Stevens is a, a super chat from David Stevens, but how does it feel in the hand? Well, you know, it feels pretty good in the hand. You know, like they totally designed it for a primate, you know, the grip, you know, it's uh, it's nice that they didn't make it out of razor blades this time or rusty rebar. It's an old joke from my phone reviews where you get like a YouTuber and like the the, the most articulate, you know, criticism or compliment. You're like, it feels really good in the hand. Apparently they made it for humans, so that's good. As if that's kind of some kind of informed commentary. But I wanted to pull this guy out because uh, I was kind of surprised, you know, pulling the, the, the 2070 out of the box, not that heavy. It's in fact lighter than my old dog of a card, my, my poor little uh, 970. So uh, this is my 970 and here, let me, uh, let me see if I can go back into my second camera. At some point, I think my second camera might lock up on me. So uh, just fair warning, it might, uh, this, this stream might get a little, a little simpler as we go. Um, so I kind of want to, here, I'm not too worried about like messing up. You shouldn't really be handling graphics cards by their, by their pins there, arresting it like that. But you know, from 970, uh, from, yeah, from 970 to 2070, this is, this is the, the, uh, the, the range that we've built. Um, from Mango Bandito, i.e. the 970 is the first card I ever bought. So 970 I was super hyped for. I was really excited to jump on the 970. And then I, I, this is like a launch day Zotac. And it's not on Zotac that I'm frustrated with this card. It's, um, it, it's more that uh, I, um, I, you know, the 970 went through some teething pains with memory management in how, uh, how the, uh, the, the onboard RAM was partitioned. It wasn't, it wasn't super great. <clears throat> So the 970, very disappointed in. But, uh, you know, we can see this, this new dual cooler, way bigger fans, much more efficient. Um, Zotac was actually really, really uh, forward thinking on their heat pipes. So the copper on the 970 was great. But uh, overall, this card, uh, pretty underwhelming. I was very disappointed in what this card was capable of. And looking up numbers and specs on, on the 2070, we're in much better territory at this tier, that sort of medium tier of, uh, of what's going on. So I'm um, seeing LFA Reviews is in the live chat. L everyone say hey to LFA, especially if you're, uh, you're into uh, good audio. If you like your ears, that is definitely an individual you should be following on Twitter. And from Vazicoast, after two months, my 165 hertz monitor finally arrived. All right, everyone say, hey, Vazikos, he's going to be getting himself into some high refresh rate gaming soon. Um, maybe, maybe Vazikos might be doing it on a card similar to this, the, uh, the Gigabyte RTX 2070. So uh, what, I, I kind of want to get the lay of the land, you know, um, not, not to do the, the gimmick of like, well, you know, vote in this poll and tell me what you're playing on. But um, for me, with what, everything that's been going on, this has been... What little time I set aside for gaming these days, uh, being uh, a father and a content producer and trying to get through tech reviews and gadget videos and stuff like that, I've been having a lot of fun going back and trying to clean out my Steam catalog. Um, revisiting some games, like uh, I'm terrible at real-time strategy. It's my one of my favorite genres, but I am not 
Twitch quick enough to really compete online, but Forged Battalion was a game I was talking up a lot about two years ago, kind of going back and playing with that. Uh, my buddy Andrew Wallace, uh, who's often in these live chats, um, he, he hooked me up with the entire uh, Command & Conquer collection. So I've been, you know, 8-bit graphics on my crazy powerful 2080. But at the same time, I'm also trying to catch up where uh, I was playing Control for a bit, and I had to set it aside, and I've gotten real bad about this. You know, it, it, with TV, with video games, just any type of continuing entertainment, um, continuing entertainment uh, method or genre, uh, you know, I'm really, really into a show and then maybe I miss an episode or then something comes up and I miss a second episode and then I just never catch back up. And so now I'm making the effort to go back and finish off a few games. Uh, you know, I, I had a lot of fun. I was about halfway through Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. You know, I kind of put it down for a day and then I just never got back into the flow of picking it back up again. So, so what... What kind of games are you guys out there playing? Are you cleaning out your, your games library? Are you revisiting some classics? Are there new titles that you're, you're jumping on right now? Um, I, I, I kind of feel like some of that cross-conversation, every time I, I, I have one of those, those chats with people, um, it's, it's always, one, enlightening, and then two, someone says something, I'm like, oh, right, I totally meant to go play that game. Um, was the other one, uh, I was uh, talking with a buddy of mine on, uh, on, the, on my Discord, uh, Baba is you. You know, like, I bought it. I haven't played it. It looks amazing. Um, but, you know, maybe instead I just needed 15 minutes of, of rage and aggression training with something like Ape Out. So, um, so that's kind of where we're at. <laughs> Got a couple other comments here. Uh, Silver Server T, still on a 970. I'm saving up, but I switched to a Ryzen 3600 first getting the backbone of your system in place, and then we can kind of see what's coming down the pipe because you'll, you'll, you'll dig a graphics update with that, uh, with that Ryzen 3600. Uh, Vazikos is on, okay, so with his, uh, with his new high refresh rate monitor, he's going to be on a Sapphire RX 5700 since last Black Friday. Ba-bam. Matt Tyler, my buddy Matt Tyler. So Matt Tyler doesn't have a gaming PC, but he's all about first-person shooters. And the man is remarkably good at playing first-person shooters on phones. I, terrible at first-person shooters under optimal conditions, laughably bad at first-person shooters when I try to play on a touchscreen. Uh, Matt's surprisingly very, very good. Not surprising, he's very, very good. I'm just always surprised when someone is very, very good at first-person shooters on a, on a thing. Jose Montero, control looks amazing with RTX. It's so funny how we find those, like, uh, those crown jewel games. Um, I was, I was really skeptical of ray tracing when we saw some of the first demos. Tomb Raider, where we saw the frame rate plummet on 1080p from a 2080. But RTX, and, and again, I, I felt like I was worried that ray tracing was going to be another buzzword technology like 3D TVs, right? We're hyping this up, but what you really get is just some prettier shadows, and that's about it. What we've seen since, as this has finally started to mature, is, is pretty remarkable. And Control became that, holy cow, I have to show you this game. And that game, you know, like, you know, that, that, that showpiece for a technology, Control blew me out of the water. So uh, going back, even though, you know, my, my, my system runs a little loud, <laughs> even though it's pretty powerful, it runs a little loud, uh, when you fire up control, it's it's incredible. Um, oh, Silver Server, only game I need a better card for is Star Citizen. I, I, I worry that Star Citizen will be one of those like jobs of a game for me um, where I'll get invested and I'll totally get into it and then it won't it won't be like a fun pastime. It'll be like my part-time or another full-time job that I'm working on top of really doing other things. LFA Reviews. Uh, playing STO, World of Warships, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, City Skylines, and Car Mechanic Simulator. Dang, man, that's a good list. Um, ooh, this is a great uh, this is a great uh, recommendation from Roy Villa from Fans of Fire Emblem. You can check out Vestaria Saga. Um, and Mango Bandito, not to mention games like Doom and Modern Warfare are optimized well for mobile. So uh, that's, that's always going to be a fun plug. 
<laughs> Matt Tyler, it's all about the PS4 and those air triggers on my old ROG too. Again, so um, a man who really did take his gaming seriously on phones, um, he, he was all about uh, first person shooters on an Asus ROG too. So it wasn't like, oh yeah, I kind of picked up a Samsung and I like to play first person shooters. No, I mean, he went whole hog. It was great. And uh, from, from Ruckman Pereira, my VGA collection, GT430, GTA430, and that's it. <laughs> I, you know, if, 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 uh, if the requirements for, uh, for producing video hadn't jumped on me, I built this monster workstation years ago where the main idea was like, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna like record audio. I, I'm I'm a voiceover director and an audio engineer by trade, and uh, you know I built this monster system, and then I started dabbling with some YouTube, and you kind of put together like you know a 720p video, and ooh maybe I can go to 1080p on this like you know crappy Canon camera that I've got, and uh, it, it's just funny how that's all snowballed. So now if I can't reasonably render 4K60, then I'm getting twitchy. Like it's just not good enough to look at, even though I'm just shooting like talking head video in the gadget lab. So I just wanted to show this off for you real quick. The, f the folks at Newegg sent this over for me to play with, but I did want to share, um, you know, just, 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 just the play ball with, uh, what they're, what they've got going on that their, uh, their sale on the gigabyte GeForce RTX 2070, a DirectX 12 graphics card with eight gigabytes of RAM is uh, is going to be on sale for the next three days for three ninety nine ninety nine. Of course, we've got all the fun specs right there. You know, core clock, one HDMI by three Display Ports. Uh, what is that? Twenty three hundred. I'm not far sighted enough to read this. CUDA cores. But yeah, I, this is this to me seems like it would be the upper sweet spot of a card that is, that's gonna be solid for both work and play. Um, I think I, not, not just say like, oh, I totally overbought with my 2080. I love my 2080. But especially once we start looking at things like content creation and the, the ability to pump out graphics, work on uh, you know, plugins and filters, and, and like I'm not doing anything super fancy on my videos, but man, it's nice. It's nice taking that little bit of a step up so, uh, but LFA Reviews is on sale, you say? So yeah, uh, 2070. And, and again, it's just, it's just adorable to see like how far we've come from a card that, that I was a bit disappointed in to what we've got going on today. And, and also just to do the, the, it feels nice in the hand test. Yeah, I'd say my 970 is a little heavier. So, so we're spreading this out. It's better balanced. <laughs> You know, if you if you had to use a, a 2070 for any type of you know uh, you know medium range combat, uh, you definitely want to take a 2070 over a 970. 970 is lopsided, and you know it's especially on that that like sort of that four forearm part of your swing, not good, not good. You'll burn yourself out way too fast on that 970. So uh, so let me pack this bad boy up here. I'm gonna put him back in his box. Oh wait, do I have? Oh no, I think I put them in the wrong bags. Let's switch those around. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't want anything on my 970 corrupting this beautiful card here. I'll put them back in the box. And then let's, let's crack open a gaming laptop. I think that'll be fun. <laughs> LFA Reviews, don't threaten me with a good deal. Hey man, this is my stream. I'll threaten you with all the deals you can handle. Oh, it's new egg. It's what we do. <laughs> All right, let me put this back away here. And then also just uh, just a shout out for to Gigabyte. Um, Gigabyte has been a phenomenal partner to work with on some of this content, and uh, I really appreciate. Um, they they drop by the office. If you catch our videos with Matt, um, Matt is uh, I forget exactly what his title is. Matt, I'm so sorry. But we've done a bunch of sit downs. Um, we covered X570, um, Gigabyte's motherboards on X570. We've covered some of their tactical displays, the, the new high end monitors that Gigabyte's been making. Matt is one of the best interviews. It just in, in all of the, like, the PR reps that I've worked with, 
I've worked with some great folks and I'm friends with a lot of people in the PR space, but I really dig Matt's style. Every time he's come into the New Egg Studios, it's like, hey, yeah, so we've got questions and you know, here's like some of the behind the scenes stuff. And you know, the next time I come, we'll probably be talking about this. And it's not like a, a cheeky tease, like, well, maybe we'll have something to say about storage. Like, he'll just straight up tell us, yeah, like the next time we, we talk, I'll probably be talking about PCIe 4 and stuff, man. It's going to be cool. <laughs> You're like, whoa, you actually just told us something. And it's real refreshing. So those videos, if you check out the Newegg Studios channel, it's, uh, it's Matt, um, uh, JJ from Asus. Always a great conversation with JJ, especially when we get into the deep dive stuff. And then uh, some of the other folks, like some of the interviews we've done creative. Some of my all-time favorite videos to put together. Again, you get someone who's really knowledgeable, and then they're just not too concerned about like, you know, maybe we can keep this a trade secret, but you're going to find out about it eventually, and so we might as well just tell you what's going on. Awesome. Awesome conversations. And Zachary Palmer... I finally made it to a live chat. Well, Zach, I'm so happy you could join us. Welcome to a live chat on, on, my, on my various streams and channels. I'm, I'm glad you could join us. LFA Reviews. I built a budget Ryzen 5 PC for streaming. It kicks butt and cost me around $600 total. I love hearing stuff like that. I, I, so I've, been building, I've been building my own PCs since like the early Pentium days. I used to work on the family computer with my dad when working on the family computer meant like ripping the shell off of an Intel 8088 and soldering stuff back onto a, to a motherboard. Um, just the power performance ratio. I know the exciting thing is supposed to be like, you know, phones and mobile and AR and VR and, and some of this like high concept uh, technology and stuff, but like what we can do with a PC in putting together a surprisingly capable and, and monster powerful system for not as much money as you would expect, and then being able to make it look cool, <laughs> where it's not just like some, some funky little beige box that may, might have come out of like an HP compact assembly line, that it looks good. It's really cool. It's really exciting seeing some of the stuff that you guys come up with, especially when we were doing more of the PC build um, uh, fan fan photos. So a viewer would send in a photo and just like some of the setups you guys are working on were phenomenal. Mm, BW1 saying yo, yo, yo. Everyone say hey Warren, what's up? All right, let's get this bad boy out of the box. This is uh, MSI and I've got a couple other props. We can do some comparisons. This is taped up really well though. So I'm going to be very careful and uh, get this guy open here. Uh, case in point, one of the things that I'm, I'm getting excited about just for my own personal channel and shaking things up where um, there is exciting stuff happening in the world of smartphones, but I think we're also in a transition period. Um, I, I, I don't know about those of you who are tech fans outside of PC building and, and uh, gaming. Um, if you're keeping up with phone stuff, that's most of what my personal channel covers is like phone and then also tech politics. Not always the most fun conversation talking about tech politics. But um, one of the other things that's been really exciting is phones have kind of homogenized on one general idea of what a super expensive premium phone should be. And then you have a couple outliers that are playing with a couple different little experimental side you know, alternatives to the main duopoly of smartphones. I feel like the world of laptops has completely upended and exploded recently. And, and I'm counting like high-end tablets all the way through the, the crazy permutations of what we call a laptop now. Fold and swivel designs, modular designs, you can rip the screen off kinds of designs, tablets, touchscreen interfaces, all the way to like durable computers, playing with the Panasonic recently. Um, and then like gaming systems, mobile workstations. For laptops not having the same, same kind of crazy visibility, I can't think of a time, a better time in the history of our sort of tech products where laptops have ever been this crazy competitive and with like no one clear winner 
You know, it's not like one company dominates 80% of the market and then everyone else is kind of picking up. It's that this is a really vibrant ecosystem, even though we're talking about laptops. You know, a lot of consumers would talk about laptops as if they're, you know, you got to have one. It's just sort of a commodity. And yet what companies are doing with them is crazy exciting. So this is the GF6. Is this taped up too? No, it's not. Okay, good. This is the GF65 Thin by MSI. Oh, sorry, I meant to switch this over so you could see the inside of the box. What is the point of an unboxing video if I can't show you the inside of the box? Oh, cardboard. Let's get that out of the way here. Um, stop, we're here to help. Should you have any questions about your gaming notebook, contact us. And we got Lucky the Dragon. So my daughter actually has a Lucky the Dragon that is almost as big as she is. Uh, one of the times the MSI guys came in to uh, show some stuff off, they knew uh, I had, a t at the time, Lex was two. And they brought us a Lucky the Dragon. Oh, you know what? Here, let me, so this is the laptop. Sorry, I should actually be doing my unboxing patter. So uh, if you've never seen a laptop before, this is what one looks like. And, uh, oh, does this have, oh, this is going to be really fun to peel. So I'm going to save that for just a second, but this is the, the GF65. You got ports. You're always nice having ports. Got a full-size HDMI and the power plug on one side. We've got USB. Are these? It looks like USB-C. I don't believe these are Thunderbolt. But the thing that I love seeing on a powerful system is Ethernet. This is so handy. Cables. When you absolutely need the best data connection possible, Sometimes you just gotta go cables. So um, yeah, I, don't get me wrong, Wi-Fi, it's great. It's super convenient. But when you want the best, you gotta plug in a cable. So we just got more cardboard here. Let me get rid of this. We got a booklet with some papers. I don't know that anyone ever reads that. And then we've got, this is also a thing that MSI is known for, um, that this is a, a gaming system. Uh, this is a, it's a pretty big boy here, a big power brick and the cable over here on the side. Let me, uh, let me set these over here because I'm probably gonna have to plug this system in. And let me drop this out here. And BW1, 100% agree, Juan, there's a lot more stuff going on. And I think with, um, with uh, PC building and with laptop building, it, it's like it's flying under the radar. And, and that's also kind of exciting in that this is, this is a, a product territory that people think they know really well, but then it's it's kind of flying under the radar, and that sort of feels subversive again. Like we're doing we're doing crazy stuff in this space that people aren't aren't aware of. <laughs> From Newegg, RGB increases efficiency. You always need more RGBs. Mandatory. That is a fact. Sorry, sorry, I know this isn't the most exciting part of a stream right here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this plugged in on the side of my desk and I'm gonna read a few more of these comments because I'm a little behind the rest of you guys in the live chat. Uh, BW1, looking forward to this one. I saw it at CES and I was really looking at it compared to the new Asus Zephyrus G14 coming soon. The Zephyruses are beautiful machines. Um, again, I, you know, I need to stop saying again as my transition word. So every time I say again, I think we need people in the live chat to like make fun of me or something. Like say I've got a punchable face or that I did it again. <laughs> Oops, I did it again where I said again. Um, I've been really excited by, by this new flavor of gaming notebook where it's still got aggressive design elements, but it looks like it could fit in really well in a, in a business boardroom. I like, I like devices that can kind of blur the line between professional and enthusiast. And the gaming segment, I think, is, has been leading the charge on some of the most exciting aspects of, of uh, PC design. <laughs> um, <laughs> BW1, all ports with no dongle needed. And from uh, Q3 Becker Ports, what are those? Uh, Apple recently, probably. <laughs> Aw, Apple. They're adorable. What's a computer? So Roy Villa, I agree. If any part of this needed more RGBs, it's this brick. Uh, wh why? 
you know, if, if this is going to have to live somewhere, and you probably don't want it buried in your carpet, um, we should be showing this off a bit more. So, uh, so yeah, you know what? That 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 is going to be feedback. I'm going to send to the uh, to the MSI crew. Uh, where are the RGBs on my power brick? So hold on. This is my favorite part, and and this is going to be great because I have to send this back to the New Egg Ninjas at some point. But um, I'm going to kind of grab. Where's the best place to get this from? Best part of unboxing any new technology. Yeah. Woo, I love that. I'll try and put it back on, but it'll get all like gross and stuff. <laughs> So this is the uh, the GF. Um, let's see. Oh, see, okay. This is what I love. Uh, this is what I really like about MSI design. Look at all that copper. They, they were showing this off. Um, where was I? At Computex. Yeah, I was at Computex um, last year, and their attention to thermal management as as, as they build it into the aesthetic of the device, of the casing. So they were showing me on the Titan, and the Titan is, is, is an insane system, but what they, what they do with that ultra high end also makes its way down into, into these other parts. Like again, this is still gonna be um, a monster system, a, a great portable option, but it, it doesn't feel like there was like less attention to these kinds of details. I mean, just look at, that just looks so cool. You know, you, you, you crack open a few like business laptops and it's things like this that make that big difference between a decently powerful, super slim notebook or, you know, some sort of a corporate machine, you know, like those, uh, you know, fleet machines that you can get from like a Dell or an HP. Obviously not talking about like an XPS. I think an XPS would probably be better laid out. And then you look at something like this and... It's, it's the double whammy of knowing that this is functional. Like this is providing a benefit to the performance of the system and it looks cool. I just love stuff like this. I could just like do the rest of the stream just looking at, at the, the bottom, at the, at the butt of this laptop. Um, but here, we're gonna crack this open and get this keyboard tray out of the way. We've got that MSI red edged look going on. Yeah, the power button's up here in the corner. But um, really, really clean looking machine, very simple. You know what I, I, what I would say is that the, the 65 here, um, the GF65, I would say we're sort of into Knight Rider territory. Like uh, this looks like the, the dashboard and control panel for Kit, you know, 1980s style David Hasselhoff. So, um, oh, Matt Tyler's going to bed. Everyone say goodnight, Matt. Um, but yeah, just, Clean, sharp, nice brushed finish on all of the surfaces. Um, it's uh, it's not too heavy. I've got another another couple uh, laptops that we're just going to take a look at and kind of compare it to here in just a sec. But good build, no weird case flexi. If you remember gaming laptops when they used to be way more edgy and sort of transformer vomitous Mountain Dew fueled. Like you'd pick one up and you can hear all the creaking and groaning from all those weird like cybered cutouts and stuff. This sharp, clean, simple, but we still have all of those like edges and lines that like this almost looks like it could be a Lamborghini inspired computer. Although I'm already getting thumbprints on it. I might have to put that plastic back on to shield it. So here, let me go back to my main camera. Let me get another drink of water here. Whew. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna boot this bad boy up. We've got we've got a little time. We can we can at least get some of this stuff set up. Ah. And just to kind of look, I, I've got my razor and uh, and then like an ultralight. So I've got like my my Chromebook because you know you can game on a Chromebook, right? That's a thing. And Fat Produce, everybody say hey to Andrew Wallace. Fat Produce is in the live chat right now. Um, BW1, the cyber, LOL. <laughs> All right, MSI logo popping up. That's really pretty right there. Uh, let, me, um, let me put this over here on the side. 
the power can I, uh, see, I don't know that this is going to be long enough. Let me kind of drop it off the edge of my desk here and then I'll move this over here. I'll move my phone, do really fancy choreography so we can keep this rolling here and get this back over here. So just a moment, the, the laptop is telling us just a moment. So, uh, like, what are we ballparking for something like this? Oh, it, it fired up. Here, let me get this started while um, I just pull up my notes here. Uh, so this is the MSI GF65. On sale right now, $969. So we're just under um, a grand for a GTX 1660 Ti. That's a six gigabyte uh, graphics chip. The Core i7, what is that? The 9750U. Still a, a, a really solid performer there. Eight gigabytes of memory on a 1080p IPS display. And of course, like all the bells and whistles with ports and connectors and USB-Cs and ethernets and all that fun stuff too with the, uh, the red edged keys and lighting. So, uh, I, you know, again, when we're talking about 1080p gaming on the go, this is, I'm oh no, I be quiet, Cortana, no. There we go. And that probably like just demonetized my stream if Cortana is copyrighted at all. <laughs> And let me get this over here. Sorry, I'm reaching over the side. I just want to show kind of comparing what it is that we're sort of looking at for different builds and stuff. So uh, here I've got a couple laptops that we can side by side this. So uh, I've been playing a lot with the Pixelbook Go. It's a little Chromebook here. Um, you can kind of see where Oh man, I don't know that I want to one hand pick this up a whole bunch, especially with that power cable. You know, building in a, a much more powerful CPU and a, a really nicely specced uh, GPU versus something that's ultra thin and light. That's kind of what the differences we'd be looking at here. Something tells me that uh, this will probably be better for battery life, looking at the Pixel Book, but uh, you know, uh, whether or not you'd want to game on it. You know, sure, you could game stream, right? Uh, why render all this stuff on the device when you can use the network? Um, but then this has been my old workhorse for a while. This is the older Razer Blade uh, 15 with, uh, what was this? This is the 970 Mobile. So the graphics chip in here was more, was similar to a, a GTX 960, uh, the desktop version of the 960. And so you can kind of see where this guy's a little bit more compact um, than what MSI's got. You can kind of see some of those differences right there. But we're in very similar territory uh, for overall build and size. Um, you know what, I, especially knowing what I know about MSI design, I really like the way that MSI vents. Um, it's one of the things that's always been really concerning on my Razer is you have these two little panels and then hot air sort of vents out under the, uh, the hinge on my display. And while this machine has been used pretty aggressively for a while, that to me was always a concern where heat was coming out on a very sensitive part, you know, the, the exciter, um, the, uh, the, what kicks on the, um, the, the monitor and the display on a laptop, to me was always worrisome, like that could be one of my failure points. And this fan is now starting to whine a little. I need to just rip this thing apart and clean everything out really detailed. But only having these two little vents right here has has been kind of a concern for how you manage, you know, the longevity. I, I, you know, I, I look at something like a gaming notebook, and if you're shopping, you know, something with this type of hardware and these types of components, it's probably because you've got designs on this being a bit more of an investment. You want this machine to last a little bit longer than just you know, I do some like casual emailing and I check my Facebook on the thinnest, lightest possible machine. And it's okay if it takes a while to launch the web browser. Folks shopping these types of solutions, I feel have at least uh, some specific concerns over various levels of performance. And even for covering, covering the basics, 
they're looking at a tier of performance that should also age well, <laughs> you know, like should get your money's worth with a dedicated GPU and, um, and uh, a good, um, a good CPU. So right now I keep bringing up the volume by mistake. So let's, uh, let's get the US, is this the right keyboard? I don't want to add a second keyboard. I can show some of this, hold on, let me, let me pull this up right here. Um, that is my Wi-Fi. So if you ever see that Wi-Fi, then you probably know where I live. And I'm not gonna show you my network key. Hmm, it's a, it's a secret. Do you want to allow your PC to be discoverable? I do. Let's live dangerously. On my on my home network. Danger. Danger is my middle name. It's not. It's Carlos. Uh, Steve DeRoach um, popping in with a super chat and just a, a, a good bit of advice for all of us as we're going through some 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 interesting times. Stay home. Stay safe. Play video games all day. And I'll add to that. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face like I'm touching my face. Um, you know, I, I really feel like this is a, this, I, I love being a part of this community during situations like this, where uh, tech, tech fans and my gadget fans and my, uh, my, all -time, my absolute favorite people to hang out with are really rising to the occasion of, uh, of looking out for each other. So uh, it really means a lot to me when I, I wake up in the morning and I see chats on social media and I see, um, sorry, I'm trying to put in my credentials here. I see chats on social media and on some of my instant messaging platforms and on Discord. And it's a group of people that just are checking in, making sure everyone else is okay and that we're all looking out for each other. I, if, if anything could show us that we really are in all of us, we really are in this together. I think we've been shown, you know, like, um, it, it's way better for us if we have each other's back. Sorry, I'm just getting everything logged in here, and I just want to get us to a to a good start screen, and then, um, no, but I don't want to. Um, we'll do my super secret pin code. One, two, three, four, five. That's what I use on my luggage. Uh, do more cross devices with activity history. Nah, not for right now, because I'm probably gonna have to wipe this out and send it back pretty soon. I'll do that later. Now, Windows as a service is like, uh, takes a lot longer to set up. Only save files to this PC. Just a moment, please. No, I don't want to set up Office 365. I'll decline the digital assistant. Sure. <laughs> I know that was really bad of me, that, that last screen where Microsoft sneaks in a whole bunch of your privacy and security settings. And I've gotten real lazy about, uh, it's fine, just do it. And hi. We're getting everything ready for you. I like pretending like this voice is really creepy. This might take several minutes. Don't turn off your PC or else, he seemed to say nefariously. All right, so this is gonna take a while. Let me, um, well, as soon as I get back to my main camera, it's gonna flip right over, I bet. No, it, it didn't. <sighs> We're talking about Andrew's mustache in the live chat. Um, uh, Mango Bandito, Windows updates wake my laptop from sleep when the lid is closed. Every update, that's no good. Um, and we got a, a couple people talking about some other, uh, some, some other um, uh, uh, smartphones to check out. So someone who is an LG G7 owner. Um, and then, uh, well, Ruckman Pereira doesn't seem to think that my 970M that's what I said, right? So I said that my the 970 mobile in my Razer was similar to a desktop 960. Um, isn't that what 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 that situation was? 
I, I thought I, I thought I said that correctly. All right. And Steve DeRoach, oh, the shivers. Please don't kill me in my sleep, Cortana. <laughs> How, just how frustrating, because Cortana was this amazing piece of software back in the Windows phone days. I, I mean, again, I know, like, I was the nerd who, I still have a shelf full of old Lumia phones, and the first time you fired up Cortana, it was incredible what she could do. And it's just sad, that because it doesn't feel like Microsoft has kept up with sort of the pushing the bleeding edge of interacting with computers with your voice. Um, and now it's, we just make jokes all about Siri, but, um, the first time, the first time I picked up a phone and I said, Hey Cortana, uh, the next time I'm at a grocery store, remind me to buy milk. And she goes, which grocery store? And I said, any grocery store. And she went, okay, the next time you're at a grocery store, I'll remind you to buy milk. And then I was at a, I was at a Ralph's like two days later and a little pop-up popped up. And he said, I see you're at a grocery store. Don't forget to buy milk. It was just like, that's amazing. That's incredible that our, our gadgets can do that. I just haven't had that feeling with stuff like voice assistants for a while. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. This is kind of creepy. Hold on. Um, so Lucky has a special message for me in the MSI Dragon Center. Oh, dang it. I missed it. He was like, oh, I'm so happy to be playing with you, some gadget guy. Um, how would you like your laptop to be? What, what should we say? What do we want my laptop to be? Do we want it to be more powerful, balance, or more battery life? First person, ready, go. This is a laptop, so any one of these could be totally, totally appropriate. But do we want power or balance or more battery life? I'm gonna say more powerful. <laughs> Roy Villa, crypto mining ready. <laughs> Ruckman, correct answer is more powerful. And Jose, I'm sorry, Jose, but we came in a little later on the chat to say balanced. Um, would you like to enter eco mode when unplug power cord? The speed of your laptop will be slower, but it can save lots of battery. That one, I will say yes. Mango Bandito say I'm power. Just like I want with my hoverboards. And would you like to prolong the life cycle of the battery? And I'll say yes again. Recharging the battery when it's lower can prolong the life cycle. When would you like to recharge? Recharging the battery when it's lower can prolong the life cycle. When would you like to charge? Oh, I see what they mean. Okay, so it's not going to charge unless it's under one of these. So I don't know, I think like under I'm going to be using this mostly at home <laughs> for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to say under 50%. And, and Lucky seemed to really enjoy, to really enjoy that, uh, um, that recommendation. That I, I, th I think I chose the right one for, for Lucky the dragon there. And what do you usually do with the system? I'm going to say play games. Um, okay, I set up the modes that's best for playing games. Do you want to enable MSI gaming mode? MSI gaming mode can optimize the system to provide the best gaming experience. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, enjoy the game. Congratulations, you have finished the setup process. Call me anytime when you need me. And now we've got Dragon Center and we can check out everything that's going on with the system. We can see the power plan. So wait a minute. So I just went through and said, I wanted this to be high power when plugged in, and it says the power plan is balanced. Man, I feel like Lucky might have just lied to me a little bit. <laughs> um, let me see. So the SSD, we've got a 500 gig SSD. We've got the 9750H CPU. Got the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660, eight gigabytes of RAM. And then we've got connections for ethernet and Wi-Fi. And they're even showing us, you know, fan speeds and uh, temperature control, how we can free up memory. I love all-in-one little control, control decks like this and uh, what our CPU usage and monitoring is. Let's see, we've got a system tuner. So right now, Oh, okay, so I, I, I think I understand now. So because I probably said that I wanted better battery life in some situations, I'm on some kind of balanced power plan. Instead of saying, just take everything to redline whenever I want it, 
Um, we can mess with fan speed. We can mess with uh, DPI. We can mess with our resolution settings. Um, MSI's RGB is set for gaming, but then I want to get look at our battery specs. So this was the battery health option. We're at 94% right now. So this should drop and it's only going to charge when we start getting lower. So when we drop to 50%, even though I've got it plugged in here, it's, it's not gonna, um, it's not gonna top off or, or power up until we get past that point. And then what do we have? Gaming mode can optimize system performance. So we say, uh, gaming mode can optimize system performance and provide auto tuning function for the game you are playing with the most suitable visual, audio, and lighting setup, bringing you the best experience. And it looks like we've got presets here for uh, Counter-Strike, uh, PUBG, Overwatch, um, Rainbow Six, Dota 2, StarCraft 2, Rocket League, Need for Speed, World of Warcraft, Fortnite, Far Cry 5, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and Apex Legends. So like right out of the box, MSI's got a couple different profiles that we can jump right in. And then, okay, we've got a voice boost. That's kind of cool. Um, I, I, I definitely, one of the things I'm gonna dig into is uh, what kind of audio kit they've packed into this thing. Um, I'm always curious to, to kind of give a listen, what kind of audio a gaming machine has. And then uh, connect it to mobile. And then, oh, just like a couple little uh, product registration, user manual, battery calibration, all that fun stuff. So really, uh, really well stocked. I mean, out of the box, we've got a lot of things to play with here in, in uh, controlling performance. So um, solid, I really dig this. I mean, it's rated high res audio here. There's a sticker. There's a sticker right there that says high res audio. So it's probably pretty good. Yeah, you, don't, you, don't just, you can't just go and buy a sticker. <laughs> and put it on a product um, because uh, uh, from Myo Nerds is is asking uh, this is just currently what it's going to be on sale for for the what is this for the next nine hours from the time that I, I shot this video nine sixty nine I and I I feel like we're in good territory uh, for a powerful all rounder gaming focused machine. That doesn't look like you know a, a a transformer got offed in a Michael Bay movie. So um, yeah, just sub one thousand dollars, and and I think we're in good territory. I think we're well joined. The 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 most interesting um, here. Let me get that back there. The most interesting tier of laptops, and where I feel like a lot of my family and friends end up shopping, is sort of around a thousand dollars. So at 969, this is a this is a a good counterpoint. This is a good conversation point against, say, a machine like my Huawei MateBook. So if you want to go thinner and smaller and lighter, this is this will also retailed um, when it originally launched. It retailed at like 1200, um, but it dropped pretty quickly in price given some of the political concerns that Huawei was facing, um, dropped pretty close, uh, pretty quickly to like 999. So 999 to 999, I feel like this is, this is the sweet spot for the, the greatest diversity of different options and solutions, making sure you're getting hardware that's the exact right fit for you. You know, if you, you can compromise on a slightly larger machine, a little bit heavier machine, price performance, man, we're, we're doing really well there. But if we want to go smaller and sleeker, we want to kind of optimize and maximize some of that experience, your $1,000 is spent in a very different way. And, you know, these would not be, like, no one would ever recommend these two as the options for the same consumer. You, you go to someone and they say, well, I want to try and do this, and I'm really worried about schoolwork, and I'm not going to be lugging it around as much as I'm going to be setting it up and using it to replace, like, a desktop in a dorm room or in a, in a bedroom or something like that. That's a very different concern than, you know, I'm constantly, you know, traveling, not anymore. Um, I'm, I'm on the go. I need something that's gonna, it's gonna slot into a smaller bag or you know, maybe a, a messenger style bag or a backpack. And, and I need something that's not gonna get in the way a whole lot. A different, a different kind of conversation. So initial setup, first impressions. And, and uh, again, for how much I've enjoyed MSI kit in the past, looking real good.
looking real good at, at sub 1000, 969, at least through the rest of today. And then after tomorrow, it, it could go higher. You know, it's, it's the thing. You, you never know. It's a mystery. <laughs> but I want to say thanks because, like, again, I, I, I like to play with new toys and get to set up some fun kit. And the ninjas at Newegg were like, hey, we really want to make sure that we're still producing fun content. Let's send you some stuff, some, some stuff to play with. Let me get the glare off the screen, and that, that, that'll be kind of a nice ending point here. Uh, just a couple other quick. Uh, we're, we're getting, we're, we're kind of a little past... Um, an hour-ish. So I just want to show off a couple other little things that are going on on Newegg right now. Uh, let me get back into my screen share here. So let's say uh, you're digging on some MSI, but you're really thinking you need to freshen up a desktop solution. MSI X570 Gaming Edge Gaming uh, Motherboard AMD AM4 SATA all of that fun stuff. We're looking at $189.99. If you wanted to jump on X570 and have some solid specs, a good solid backbone of a motherboard to make sure your build's gonna rock and or roll, that's totally, totally something I would recommend checking out. Especially like looking through all the sales. These were some of the ones that I thought were really interesting. Um, the flip side of that, let's say you're on Team Intel and you're looking at uh, you know trying to build yourself a monster system. Asus ROG Strix Z390E Gaming. It's an LGA 1151 300 series. Uh, it's going to be on sale for $239.99. Again, uh, not not too bad there. And our our pals at Asus also putting together some some monster hardware. And then just to follow that up because we were talking about laptops today and showing off some of the different comparisons on laptops. Um, this, this to me is another example in that getting close to a thousand, but $850 for an Asus ZenBook 14. So these are uh, specs that are going to be very competitive against that Matebook that I was showing you. But we're looking at an AMD R7 3700U CPU. AMD getting a lot more competitive, mm, excuse me, getting a lot more competitive with their, with their mobile uh, mobile strategy and seeing these parts ending up in thin, light, portable notebooks and systems while we're also often able to fight with a very price competitive uh, price tag against some of the more traditional offerings that we've seen in the space. Really interesting fights going down. This is, I mean, I, there, there's a lot of drama happening out in the world today, but the current you know, competition between these various manufacturers. When we look at the main players for GPUs, when we look at the CPU wars, we look at how ARM chipsets are starting to compete against x86. This is good. The way that this year wraps up, and when we start looking at these portable technologies and these, these different systems and uh, AMD versus Intel versus Qualcomm versus, you know, any other players that I'm, I might be forgetting here, um, that to me becomes one of the most exciting aspects of playing in this tier. You know, uh, an $850 ultra slim ZenBook. That is such a that is, that is such an exciting price tag to see for clean, simple, sleek, throw it in a bag kind of design. So some really exciting stuff. I'm gonna take another drink of water here, and then if there are any other uh, comments here, we can kind of wrap up this stream. Let me get my phone back here. <laughs> And from Steve DeRoach. So we're gonna be looking at some very, uh, shall we say price aggressive AMD parts because the 4000 series is probably gonna be coming out soon. But the 3700U is such a solid performer. And especially when we're comparing it against some of those, uh, some of those ultra slim and lower power Intel parts. Um, I don't know, that's just what gets me really excited is when we have a good fight. I really, you know, if it's smartphones, if it's laptops, if it's, you know, desktop components, I am not a big fan of there being a winner. I don't think the market is ever exciting when one company is kind of untouchable. And, and not necessarily like they make the best product, but maybe it's that they, they have the best selling and distribution or they have the best perks or they just have the best marketing. And right now we're in this great sweet spot where a number of companies are competing and are delivering on a new kit in very novel and very aggressive ways. And that to me is always gonna be a lot more fun to talk about than just, well, this company's in the lead and they have been for a while and I guess they're still the winner. 
that gets dull really, really fast. From Myo Nerds, I don't know if that's power optimized for the battery. I don't know what you're talking about, Myo Nerds. I don't know if that's well power optim. I I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're asking there. Um, if it's if it's this guy here, or if it's for, oh, if you're talking about the the AMD part, I I, I don't know. I I'm not sure what you're asking. So on that note, let's go ahead and start wrapping this. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of talking over the last couple of days. It's funny when you don't go out to studios, like you just spend more concentrated time in front of your computer, just talking at your monitors and cameras. And so I, I have to be careful, like I'm getting kind of close to burning my voice out again. Um, but I'm going to be doing another live stream with my buddy TK on Saturday. And then we've got a couple other videos coming out to the channel that you're going to want to check out. Um, and then I'm also going to be re uh, uh, circling back to um, my first love audio um, under the hashtag 2020 hearing campaign, where we're going to talk a little bit more about hearing health. And then also how to improve audio quality. And especially for those of you who are really into your gaming, yeah, we care about visuals. We love faster frame rates. We love powerful GPUs. But we should be treating our ears with as much love as we treat our eyes. And I think if you really want to maximize that gaming experience, the two need to go hand in hand. Like, they got to complement each other. So, folks, um, thank you so much for, for jumping in and joining me on a little hour-long live stream here. I'm really excited. I think we're going to be putting together some really, uh, uh, some really innovative content with the New Egg team, the New Egg Ninjas. I'm talking to Trisha about trying to do some co-streams and some interviews. Um, there, there are a lot of topics that we can be covering and that we can also be helping each other out with. I, again, thank you so much to the folks that were giving Matt some good advice on building his own PC in the live chat. I wasn't able to comment on all of it, but I was reading through. This, this community coming together, this is the best time. And, and again, like I said earlier in the live stream, when we rise to this occasion, when we are good tech neighbors and good tech citizens, I mean, we shine like no other community. So I, I'm glad you guys have my back. I'm out here to have your back. And we're going to talk about some cool stuff. And also try to have a good time. First and foremost, like, nice to have some fun <laughs> with everything that's going on. So folks, thank you so much for watching, for sharing videos on this channel. Be on the lookout both on my personal channels and then over on the Newegg channels because we've got some more content coming out with Newegg Studios, some other live streams there. The Newegg Plays team, make sure you've got your Twitch, your Twitch action, They're playing fun games and having a good community around that. And uh, I'll catch you all on a future video, a future live stream, and a future podcast. So thanks so much. Be well. Take care. Keep your heads down. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. And play some cool games. I'll catch you all on the next live stream.